Yeah, good afternoon, everyone, and I thank uh, AIOS Shia ma'am uh, for this opportunity. And uh, continuing with uh, cataract surgery in troubled cornea, I would like to discuss about cataract surgery in fugues endothelial dystrophy. So I'll start with a, a case of a 52-year-old female who presented to us with decreased vision in both eyes in six months and had uh, worse vision in the right eye, which was 618N8 uh, with correction and 612N8 in the left eye. And there was diffuse uh, gutte in both eyes, uh, more, right more than left, and, uh, and nucleosclerosis of grade 3 in the right eye and a grade 2 in the left eye. So the diagnosis was of uh, Fuchs endothelial corneal dystrophy and cataract. Uh, so now the big question uh, that one faces is uh, whether to do a cataract surgery alone or to do a combined uh, cataract surgery with a endothelial uh, keratoplasty. So uh, starting with Fuchs, Fuchs as described by uh, Krashmer uh, has been graded from grade 0 which is no disease to grade uh, 5 uh, to grade 6. Uh, the grade 1 is early uh, disease where you can just see about 0 to 12 uh, central gut and grade 2 is uh, more uh, more than 12 and uh, of course non-confluent gut but it is usually the grade 5 which has more than 5 millimeter of central confluent gut or grade 6 which is a G uh, that is which is uh, grade 5 uh, with additional epithelial plus stromal edema which are the ones which need uh, major uh, corneal interventions. Now the other uh, important uh, apart from a clinical examination important preoperative diagnostics include uh, specular microscopy which provides data on the endothelial cell count and morphology usually less than 10 1000 cells may lead to corneal decompensation and uh, one needs to be uh, that needs to be explained to the patient however the problem with specular microscopy is that in advanced cases you may not be able to even uh, obtain any data under such uh, circumstances uh, confocal microscopy can be used and uh, it gives endothelial cell count as morphology as well as it can document uh, gut a and is useful even in advanced cases but it is an expensive tool and it is not very easily available the other important uh, preoperative consideration is a pachymetry or the central corneal thickness. One could use a shine flag topographer or a ultrasonic device. Even the uh, specular microscope gives the central corneal thickness. Now, the central corneal thickness increases due to endothelial dysfunction. And in typically, what uh, Fuchs dystrophy, the uh, increased central corneal thickness is noted uh, centrally as compared to other endothelial uh, uh, pathologies uh, in which that endothelial dysfunction could be diffuse or it could be localized anywhere. Now, uh, coming to these recent uh, papers from the Mayo Clinic, which have tried to grade um, fixed dystrophy based on the Schimflag topography, they used a pentacam. So they have uh, uh, they've described three distinct uh, features to grade the uh, fugue dystrophy. The first is the displacement of the thinnest uh, point of the cornea, loss of the uh, parallel and circular oval isopax, and third is the focal area of posterior surface depression. That is, the posterior surface bends towards the uh, uh, anterior capsule that is inwards. So these are the three characteristics which they have uh, noted on uh, the pentacam and based on this this is the grading that they have uh, described from from down up which is the uh, no fuchs dystrophy where you don't see gutte and it's a normal cornea then you could have a fuchs endothelial dystrophy but no edema where clinically you will see gutte but uh, on the on the time flux topography you may not uh, see any of the features which were described uh, which I just described the, the third category is the fuchs dystrophy with subclinical edema where you will get uh, uh, which are typically uh, confluent but any without clinically definite edema and here uh, any of two of the features of uh, of pentacam the shine flag topography uh, could be present and the fourth category is the fuchs endothelial corneal dystrophy with clinically definite edema where uh, not only uh, gutters are present there is visible corneal edema and the tomographic features all three are usually present so these are the more uh, severe cases but they have classified it but they have not provided any guidelines as to you know which uh, treatment modality one should go for whether to go in which situation whether, which, whether to go for a cataract alone or a combined procedure uh, so now coming uh, back to our patient here uh, what we noted what we noted a displacement of the uh, thinnest point of the cornea and also the loss of uh, parallel or circular oval isopax so, and uh, here uh, maybe uh, when you see this little lamp just the center we could see a mild uh, thickening of the central cornea so there was possibly some amount of uh, some amount of subclinical edema there the specular microscopy we didn't get any counts so we could see some images but uh, not much of count the pachymetry was uh, 525 and also here 
here you can see that uh, it is around 557. So how does uh, one approach uh, such a case? So this is uh, uh, another paper uh, by Moshifar et al. published last year which uh, talks about uh, how to choose between simultaneous versus sequential uh, surgery. So it essentially uh, you know uh, uh, based on the central corneal thickness if it is less than uh, if it is <clears throat> more than 640 microns then you do the uh, you do the uh, specular microscopy and based on the specular microscopic uh, uh, findings uh, if its counts are less uh, then uh, then definitely you need to do a combined and if it, if it is not uh, if it is reasonable then you could still explain the explain the prognosis to the patient the other uh, thing is if the central corneal thickness is uh, less than say 640 microns and if you do the endothelial cell density which is less than 500 then you definitely need to do a combined procedure procedure. If it is less than 1000, you could uh, choose uh, preferably even cataract or if you want, you can even do a combined procedure. But if you're doing a cataract, you need to explain the uh, possibility of uh, combined procedure in the future. And the, if the endothelial cell density is more than 1000, then you can safely go ahead and do a cataract surgery alone. So we uh, chose to do a combined procedure for this uh, lady. That's the uh, clinical photograph which I had shown um, earlier. So uh, we, as you can see, the black dots in the center, these are very uh, suggestive of uh, gutte. You can see that nicely. Now, of course, the small desmet membrane at, at the detachment at the where I entered the AC, not a good idea to continue there. So a good uh, sense prevails, and I make another side port and avoid that area. Once the rexis is uh, done, we remove the uh, enterocapsule hydro dissection. Now, very critical is the soft uh, shell technique is to first use dispersive viscoelastic to coat the endothelium. Uh, followed by a uh, cohesive viscoelastic uh, under the di dispersive viscoelastic and also important to use um, uh, the BSS which has the oxidized glutathione uh, which is endothelial protective. Now here unfortunately my trench is not very centered so I get a uh, divide which is not uh, equal it's kind of two third one third but uh, still I continue uh, with that. And uh, important to remember to uh, you know inject both viscoelastics uh, repeatedly. We remove the small uh, fragment first. Try remove, remember to keep the phaco tip as far away from the endothelium as possible. Divide the nucleus into uh, smaller fragments so that if you have bigger fragments, the chance, chances of those hitting the endothelium is much more as much as possible. In the bag, um, phaco emulsification uh, should be done. So these nucleus uh, pieces uh, chattering away again, uh, you should avoid them hitting the endothelium and try and uh, uh, keep their control, keep the movement uh, minimums. Then repeated injection of viscoelastic. I cannot uh, highlight this more, the soft shell technique, uh, both cohesive and the dispersive viscoelastic, the routine uh, epinucleus uh, removal, and then the cortical wash. This is the dispersive. Coming to the intraocular lens, it has to be carefully implanted. Make sure it doesn't touch the endothelium anywhere. And we always uh, try and put a hydrophobic acrylic uh, IOL because you may, if you need a endothelial keratoplasty in the future, hydrophobic acrylic is the best material. Try and remove of all viscoelastic. There is this lady who improved to six, nine, and six. Uh, so just to summarize, careful uh, clinical examination and to look for the gutte, specular microscopy, look for corneal edema, progressive nature of Fuchs endothelial dystrophy needs to be explained if you're doing cataract surgery alone. Soft shell technique is uh, most important, sorry. And uh, in the back phaco emulsification and should also uh, keep the nuclear fragments away from the endothelium. Repeated injection of cohesive and dispersive viscoelastic and also use sharp blades to avoid desmet membrane detachment. Thank you. Thank you, Sushmita.